Good morning everyone, it's uh, good to be with you, to share the word uh, of God today with you and uh, our theme for this week, we're going to be thinking about uh, prayer and exploring uh, what that means for us uh, individually and uh, corporately as a fellowship and so I'd encourage you to have your Bible ready. Um, I'm also going to be just sharing from a few um, other books, one in particular is uh, this one by uh, Henry Nguyen uh, which I would recommend to you um, or if you want to borrow it from me please do come and ask. So if you've got your Bibles ready uh, we'll be having a look at some different scriptures as we think through um, the whole topic of prayer. So last week Annette kicked us off uh, thinking about one of the spiritual disciplines, one of the things that we can do which is continuing uh, to read the word of God and uh, how that was active and ready how God is ready to speak to us through his word. And uh, today we're going to be thinking about that spiritual discipline of prayer. And uh, sometimes the word discipline can uh, make us feel uncomfortable. Sometimes discipline isn't something that we kind of want to do. But I'm sure lots of us will have, uh, will have started new disciplines or new habits even during this lockdown period. Uh, new ways of doing things. We might have started a new hobby or new routine. We may well have committed ourselves to uh, to something that we didn't do before. And so with prayer, uh, we can maybe think of it in that same way, that um, as a discipline, as something which helps us to draw close to the Lord, this can be something that we can, um, we can commit ourselves to uh, personally and also as a fellowship. So I wanted to just start with a uh, with a quote from from this book I just showed you by Henry Nguyen, and he he talks about discipleship calling for discipline, and he says this. He says the various disciplines of the spiritual life are meant for freedom, and are reliable means for the creation of helpful boundaries in our lives within which God's voice can be heard, God's presence felt, and God's guidance experienced. Without such boundaries that makes space for God, our lives quickly narrow down. We hear and see less and less. We could become spiritually sick and one-dimensional. The only remedy for this is the intentional practice of prayer and meditation. I find that very helpful um, because it helps me to uh, think about uh, the need for discipline in prayer. And sometimes our own spirit is kind of against, <laughs> well, the flesh really can be against what the spirit desires. And so we have to recognise that within this, uh, we are in a spiritual battle and uh, we must remember to put on the full armour of God to equip us uh, when we come to prayer. So this intentional um, journey that we need to go on uh, for prayer uh, I was uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was on holiday with my lovely family in um, Herefordshire and we visited a church in one of the little black and white uh, villages, um, villages with the kind of black and white houses. And uh, we went to a place called Dinsmore. I don't know if you've been there before, but it has the most beautiful uh, small village church. And outside in the churchyard was a labyrinth, which was made of stones um, in the churchyard. And they had a little guide to take you around the labyrinth. And I thought, you know what, I'm on holiday. I'm going to just spend a little bit of time doing this labyrinth. And uh, as I did so, as I made that decision to enter the labyrinth and to think um, and to give to God things that were on my heart, as I made the journey around the labyrinth, I had a great sense of God's peace. And when I got to the centre of the labyrinth, I could stand and just know his real peace with the issue that I'd brought to him. And then as I came back out of the labyrinth, I could just let it go and leave it with God. And I think prayer is, is kind of like that. If you can imagine yourself, it's that intentional journey you're going into with the Lord. And as you do that, the Lord will guide you. He will speak to you as you pour out your heart to him. And uh, as you get to the centre of the place um, of intimacy with the Lord, that he will indeed just... Uh, bring you his peace and um, often will just speak to you in a way that you may not expect. So I'd like to encourage you that prayer, personal prayer, um, is a place where God can change us. It's a place where he can mould us. It's a place where he can shape our thoughts and our hearts 
about ourselves, about the world, about other people. And it helps us to better understand who he is, um, who we are in him. And uh, it gives us more of a heavenly perspective, hopefully for our for our neighbours, for the stranger, for things that go on in the world. Uh, it takes us to a place um, of repentance. Um, and it's also a place where God can strengthen us and empower us, where he can remind us of his great love for us and the gifts that he's given us. So if we think about the pattern of scripture where we see uh, Jesus praying, we know that he often went to a quiet place to pray. Um, and that quiet place was often a mountain. Now, we don't have many mountains um, around here, so we may not have a mountain we can climb to be with God. But hopefully all of us can find um, a bit of time and space where we can just be with the Lord on a regular basis. So Matthew 14 and verse 23 uh, says he, Jesus, dismissed the crowd and went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And indeed, sometimes Jesus would spend the whole night praying. And uh, why did he why did he do that? Why was there a need for the Son of God to go up a mountain to spend time with his father? Well, he had to cultivate that one to one relationship away from the distractions of his ministry, where he would receive revelation, where he would indeed receive strength and guidance from the Lord to do God's will and not his own. He understood his identity and his mission. That was the place of uh, where God filled him and uh, set him ready for what was to come. And so for us too, the place of prayer is linked very much with the place of action. So we need to have that place of, of quiet contemplation in order to be fueled and ready for the ministry uh, which God has for each one of us to do. One of those fuels the other. So as we go into prayer, we can listen and we can grow. We can be refreshed and we can have direction. And then as we go out to minister, uh, we do that in the strength of God and in the power of God and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then when we come back to prayer, we can bring back to him again um, our thoughts, our worries, our concerns, our joys um, about our ministry about our lives, about our family, about the world. And again, he will come and fill us anew as we lay them at his feet. So again, just going back to Matthew, but this time in uh, chapter 6 and verse 6. It says, when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. And then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And so when we're praying uh, with the Lord, just just him and us in a quiet place, our um, our connection with him can move from just a conversation, a listening and a speaking to a real communion, a place where words are not even required. And so this is our reward in Christ is to be able to have this this uh, this deep place where we can just go and be with him. Uh, that can be the joy of our heart to have that as a special place. And I think the more we do that, the more we will want to do it. Again, Psalm 42 and verse one says to us, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. And so I'd encourage you as you go to and find a place of prayer, maybe you'll light a candle to help you to focus. Maybe you'll just listen to some worship music before you do that, just to get you into the right uh, frame of mind or the right thinking, uh, just to be able to be quiet and to lay down um, your day before the Lord and to um, just be hungry and thirsty uh, for him and for that relationship to go deeper. Now, another book I was just going to uh, recommend to you, uh, oh, probably can't see that one very well. It's uh, called uh, Sacred Rhythms and it's by Ruth Haley Barton. And in it, she speaks about this uh, communion with God, this quiet uh, that we can be a part of. In her book, Ruth talks about us being like a pot bound plant 
how some of us can become like a pot bound plant in our prayer life that actually um, our roots have kind of taken up everything that they can from the soil in that space of pot and we almost need to be transplanted into a bigger pot with fresh soil in order to be able to grow and uh, for me I found that a helpful picture to think that uh, sometimes I can become in different areas of my life I can become kind of a bit stagnant and uh, maybe God just wants to move us on uh, into something new to help us grow and so with prayer too we can become a bit stagnant and uh, we maybe just need refreshing and so ask God just to to give you a new pot and to give you some new soil uh, to help you to grow and just be ready um, to see what he's going to do uh, when you ask him to do that and um, and as you do that I pray that you will thrive in your relationship with him so uh, let's just be willing <laughs> to be transplanted uh, into the new pot um, another scripture which I found helpful is uh, Psalm 27 and verse 4 and this is kind of for me what it's like to be in that quiet place of prayer it says one thing I ask of the Lord and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. So the more time we spend with God, the more time we want to spend with God in prayer. And um, that's where we will hear his voice, where we will get ourselves connected, where we will recognise um, that it's his will that is important, it's his way that is important, it's his glory that is important. It's where we can lay down uh, before him our own uh, sinfulness, where we can lay before him our, our difficulties and we can pick up what it is that he wants to do with our lives, the way he wants to use us for his glory. I also wanted us to think as well about um, corporate prayer today. And again, um, the pattern comes from the Bible, from those first disciples, um, where Acts 2 tells of the story when uh, the disciples were first filled with the Holy Spirit. They waited and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then following on from that infilling of the Holy Spirit, um, they then went out to do great things for God in the power of the Spirit. So verse 42 of Acts 2 says this, it says they, the disciples, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And so it takes us back to that pattern, that pattern of prayer together in this case and then ministry. So the disciples came together to pray, to eat, to have fellowship, to remember Jesus. And then they went out and people were um, filled with awe at the things that happened. So those first disciples remembered how they'd witnessed Jesus praying, what they'd seen him do. And they wanted to then go and do the same. And, and he had indeed said to them, you will go and do the same. Um, and later in other books in the uh, New Testament, we read of other uh, first Christians who um, knew that way of Jesus and how to pray and saw how prayer could make a massive difference um, in their own lives and in the lives of those around them. And we can do the same today. So we see um, those disciples praying in faith for healing and deliverance from evil spirits. And they saw people's lives transformed. We can do the same today. They petitioned God and made requests for each other. We can do that today. We can be praying for each other as brothers and sisters. They prayed for Gentiles to see the truth. They preached the word and they prayed for the truth to come and salvation to come. We can do the same today. They made intercession for people. 1 Timothy 2 says, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And so we can do that too. We can bring our prayers and petitions to God for the world 
uh, we can make intercession for those countries of the world that we, where we know there are really bad problems. We can give thanks to the Lord in our prayers for all the things he is doing. We can pray for those in authority today. And as Christians, it's this is our job <laughs> as the church. This is our job. It's not optional. This is what we need to be doing in order to see the world changed for the Lord. Of course, those uh, some of those disciples also prayed prayers of repentance on, um, on behalf of others. They called others to examine their own lifestyles and to accept the truth of the gospel. And so we can know God's salvation in ourselves, but we can also be praying for others that they too will come to know the truth about Jesus. Just to share with you again another scripture from Ephesians this time and uh, Ephesians and chapter 6 and verse 18 reminds us to pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests and with this in mind be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Of course this comes at, at the end of a passage about praying um, and putting on the armour of God so making sure we remember, uh, as I said earlier, that this is a spiritual battle when we go into prayer, um, but that we can do that and then we can pray by the power of the Spirit. And what does that mean, praying in the Spirit? It doesn't mean praying in tongues. Uh, praying in tongues is, or speaking in tongues or singing in tongues is something different. That's it. That's a gift of the Spirit, which many Christians will have, but not necessarily everyone. But praying in the spirit is just putting our trust in God, putting our trust in him that he hears us when we pray. It's relying on him that he will understand us when we pray and that he will act. So when we pray, we're just asking for his will to be released into different situations, that he will hear our prayer and that he will be the one who will act. So if you're doing those things, if you're trusting in God when you pray, if you're trusting that he hears you, if you're relying on him to understand you and that you, if you're relying on him to act on your prayer, then you are praying in the spirit. That's when you're praying in the spirit. Romans 8, um, I've shared before with you, um, where it talks about the spirit helping us um, in our weakness when we don't know what to pray, in the times when we don't have the right words to speak. Remember then that the Spirit intercedes for us on those occasions, on the times when we're lost for words, on the times when the pain is too bad and we don't have words to speak to God. Uh, the Spirit intercedes on our behalf and um, in a, ho a holy kind of way that we probably don't truly understand. Uh, the Lord hears our prayer and the Spirit uh, and intercedes for us. So just thinking again, uh, just going back to thinking about that corporate prayer and our individual prayer lives. Of course, there are all sorts of different prayers uh, we can pray, whether we do that alone, whether we do it in twos or threes, whether we pray um, in our cell groups, whether we pray here on a Sunday morning uh, in our church or in our church meeting. This is a way that as a fellowship, we're joined together in our corporate prayer together. And we become the living stones that Jesus has called us to be. So Ephesians 2 and verse 21 says this. It says, in him, Jesus, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. So we're not just a group of individuals doing our own thing, living our own lives for God, but we're part of God's holy temple, built together spiritually, each one of us a stone, built into his church, built on the foundation of Jesus himself, the chief cornerstone. And the Holy Spirit, if you think of the Holy Spirit being a bit like the cement, which holds each brick, each stone in place. So... Praying together is, is a vital part of our Christian life, a major part of uh, what we need to do together 
in order to um, to see the world change for Christ. So just one more little reading, and uh, this is from um, an Enduring Word commentary by David Gusick. And I just felt this um, just really summed up just that whole picture of, of, of us being living stones together. So he says, the church is a building perfectly designed by the great architect, God himself. It is not a haphazard pile of stones randomly dumped in a field. God arranges the church for his own glory and purposes. This tells us that the church is a dwelling place where God lives. It is never to be an empty house that is virtually a museum with no one living inside. The church is to be both the living place of God and his people. I love that. The church is to be both the living place of God and his people. And so we, as the church of God here in Toaster, or part of the church of God here in Toaster, within TVBF, we have a special place. Thinking about the Toad Valley Centre as well, and uh, just thinking about how we are the stones that make up that place. That place is just a building and we are we are the live stones. That place just has the stones. <laughs> we are the living stones. I can kind of maybe imagine it a little bit like a, um, you know, like an inner skin, you know, like we're the inner skin of the building. We're the inner skin of the church. I know when you see it going up, you can see the breeze blocks and then the blocks and then the bricks on the outside. We can imagine ourselves like being that inner skin. We are that living, we are those living stones which are inside. And uh, the bricks are just the bricks. <laughs> but we really are what makes up the church. With Christ at the centre, with us joined together in fellowship and in prayer, we are the ones who make the church for Jesus as he moves in us and works in and through us. So just to finish then, uh, our individual communion with God, our meeting with God, I just encourage you to find a quiet place each day and just to find communion with the Lord. And secondly, just for us to remember how he brings us together as these living stones uh, to pray together, to grow together, uh, to be the ones who, will, who people will meet <laughs> Uh, to be the ones who can pray powerfully and effectively, as uh, James reminds us in chapter five of his book, where it says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So let's be encouraged uh, that prayer works. <laughs> prayer works. We just have to come to God in obedience uh, to pray, to come before him, and then we will know uh, more of him and be able to share more of him. So I hope that's helped us to think a little bit about prayer today. So let's just uh, pray together now as we finish. Lord God, thank you for uh, your word to us today. Thank you that your Holy Spirit is alive in us. And Lord, that you want us to grow in you, in our prayer life, in our, um, in our obedience to you, in our intimacy with you, Lord God. So my prayer is for each one of us today, each one of us hearing this message today, Lord, you would touch our hearts and you would help us to know what it is we need to do. Lord God, that you would give us a real desire to um, just to turn to you in prayer um, in our own quiet space, but also together. And Lord, as we do that, that you would bless us, that you would guide our fellowship and we would know more of who you are. So we thank you, Lord God, for your uh, unending love, your unfading love and your spirit that uh, lives within us. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs>